Basketball for me was the most important thing. So everything I saw, whether it was TV shows, whether it was books I read, people I talked to, everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything, everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library. The world becomes your library to help you improve your craft, better yes. your craft. Yes, indeed. So because you know what you want, the world's giving you exactly the information you 100%. need to become better at it. Because you know what you're looking for. If I was in high school with you, yeah. outside of your game, mm -hmm. outside of you playing ball, mm -hmm. who was Kobe Bryant as an individual and personality in high school? If we were in high school together. Um, much the same that I am now, actually, which is extremely curious. Extremely curious. I had a great teacher in high school. Her name is Jane Mastriano, who I'm still, I'm still very close to. And she sparked my curiosity in writing. And the reason why I felt it was important at the time was not for the writing's sake, or not for storytelling purposes, but there are things in story, inherently in story, that can help me be a better basketball player, be a better teammate, a better leader, understand emotions better. So that's why I got into it, into storytelling, actually. So it was just in insanely curious, man. And, um, you know, trivial things weren't going to pull my attention. It had to be things, weren't going to pull my attention. It had to be things that were... I had a purpose. I wanted to be one of the best basketball players to ever play. And anything else that was outside of that lane, I didn't have time for. And where did inspiration come from? Um, the love of the game. The love of the game, the challenge. Like, I, I would watch Magic play, I'd watch Michael play, and I would see them do these unbelievable things. And I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? I don't know, but let's find out. Let's find out. And so that curiosity to see where I could push this thing led me At down that path. years old, you know, I played the longer game because my game wasn't about being better than you at 13. It was to be better than you when, you know, the chips are really on, on the line. So when you played at 13, I would size you up and see what your strengths and weaknesses are. How do you approach the game? Are you silly about it? Are you goofy about it? Are you good at it just because you're bigger and stronger than everybody else? Right? Or is there actually thought and skill that you put into it? Right? And when I'd play, I'd play to my weaknesses. I wouldn't play to my strengths. I'd play to my weaknesses. Because when you're playing summer basketball, there's so many games. So there's not a lot of skill work being done. So when are you going to get better? Right? When you're playing in competition situations, you're only playing to your strengths. Why? Because you want to win. Right? So what I would do, I was work on the things during those games that I was weak at. Left hand, pull up jump shot, uh, post game. Right, so I have a strategy. And so then, fast forward to when I'm 17, and my game is completely well-rounded, and that player at 13, that I saw at 13, is still doing the same shit at 17. Mm -hmm. Now you got you a problem. You get mentally and emotionally so strong where it doesn't bother you. Well, you know, it's, you got to look at the reality of the situation. You know, like for me, it's not, you know, you, you kind of got to get over yourself. Like, it's not about you, man. Like, okay, you feel embarrassed. You're not that important. Like, <laughs> get over yourself. That, that's where you go. Get over yourself, right? Like, you're worried about how people may perceive you, and, like, you're walking around, and it's embarrassing because you shot five air balls. Get over yourself, right? And then after that, it's okay, well, why did those air balls happen? Got it. High school, year before, we played 35 games, max, right? Week in between, spaced mm -hmm. out, plenty of time to rest. In the NBA, it's back to back to back to back to back to back to back. I didn't have the legs. So you look at the shot, every shot was online. Every shot was online, but every shot was short, right? I got to get stronger. Uh, I got to train differently. The weight training program that I'm doing, I got to tailor it for an 82-game season mm -hmm. so that when the playoffs come around, my legs are stronger and that ball gets there. So I look at it with rationale and say, okay, well, the reason why I shot air balls is because my legs aren't there. I go, well, next year they'll be there. That was it. Done. That was really your work ethic like, and for how long did you stay disciplined? Um, well, I mean, I mean, every day. I mean, since, you know, for 20 years. I mean, it was an everyday process in trying to figure out strengths and weaknesses. For example, jumping ability. Man, my vertical was a 40. It wasn't a 46 or a mm -hmm. 40, 45. Um, my hands are big, but they're not massive, right? So you got to figure out ways to strengthen them so your hands are strong enough to be able to palm a ball and do the things that you need to do. Uh, quickness, I was quick, but not insanely quick. 
I was fast, but not ridiculously fast, right? So I had to rely on skill a lot more. I had to rely on angles a lot more. I had to study the game a lot more. And, uh, but I enjoyed it, though. So, like, from the time I was, I can remember when I started watching the game, I studied the game, mm. and it just never changed. How to create momentum shifts, where momentum shifts come from, all this sort of stuff. Um, and then studying outside of that, right? Looking at different industries, looking at uh, conductors, looking at writers, looking at actors, and how they get into character, and then how do they keep themselves in that mental space. So... Um, looking at different, different industries, looking at nature itself, mm. and learning from that and how you can incorporate that into the game. It, I, I, man, it's, it's a lot of stuff. If I'm buddies with you from high school, if I'm a cousin of yours, what happened to our relationship? How, how did that gravitate when you went into the league and you're, you're determined to become the greatest or you're determined to become one of the greatest? What happens to our relationship? Oh, it suffers. It does suffer? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because and you they, understood that. You oh, were okay, okay with that. Well, yeah, and, and the people that love you, like friends and family, like they know that about you. Got it. So they let you be you. And when you reconvene, you know, you pick back up where you left off. Mm -hmm. But make no mistake about it, everything in between is lost, right? So those long-term relationships, the commitment of time of, uh, you know, uh, taking vacation. Like I see a lot of players take vacations with other players that are close friends. And I'll oh, just take vacations just to take vacations or just hang out just to hang out. Like, I, I, I'm not, I never did that. But why it was a why choice. not go? Why, why, why didn't you do that? What? Well, because when I retire, I didn't want to have to say, I wish I would have done more. I don't want that. You know, I don't want that. 